everyone. Welcome to Felicitations Book Club. It is me, Felicia Day. And, oh, uh, and Bonnie Burton. Sorry, I should have actually gestured to you. I forget. <laughs> sometimes we're audio, sometimes we're video. It doesn't matter. I forget to upload these anyway to my feed, but I'm going to be better. Now it is no longer summer. It's fall. Basically, get the pumpkin spice. Get your Halloween oh. decorations out. It's... Oh, what do you mean get them out? Do you realize that I've been, like, shopping for Halloween since, like, the end, like, beginning of July? Bonnie, this you is... have a lot of Halloween stuff in your background. And it, look, it, like... It, well, you can't really tell, but it's supposed to turn colors. And then um, the best thing I got, I mean, not to turn this into like a Halloween haul video or anything, yeah. but hello, Bride of Frankenstein. Oh my God, that's so cute. Is that awesome? No, for real, I that's her, really cute. I got her at Michael's uh, craft store. I so hate right to say now, this. Uh, Ma yeah. Michael is, Michael's is magical. It is, it is. And they have all their, what we call it, the goths call it code orange and that's when we know all the halloween stuff's out but a lot of that it just depends on what state you live in too so like i follow a lot of youtube goths yeah from kansas from like the midwest and east coast so they get everything first but i finally found out that like these over in the valley in north hollywood and burbank and that sherman oaks area uh there's a ton of halloween stuff at michael's ross marshall's it's like Home people Woods. started vomit I, I went to target and they were moving out the back to school and they were putting in the halloween and for once i wasn't angry you know it's sad target's always the last one to do it home goods has mm -hmm. had stuff since july and home goods like has the best stuff for cheap i think does it i oh, gotta go there jo yeah joanne's has great stuff but it's like super expensive so you kind of have to wait till it's like more than 40% off, because even if it's 40% off, it's still expensive. Yeah. So it's like, and Anthropology and Ikea both have Halloween stuff for the first time ever. I love it. I mean, Anthropology used to, okay, the clothes used to be much better quality, and they have gone yeah. downhill. It is bad, y'all. But it happens with everything. Everlane, uh, Madewell, all of them, the quality is so low. Aritzia kind of stayed up there, I have to say. Aritzia is good, but there's not that many. Cha you know, yeah. it's a chain, but it's not huge. But I'm really disappointed in the whole uh, quality. But I will say that Anthropology does have great door knockers, handles, all of that stuff. I still love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, this is my Christmas, so I love shopping for Halloween stuff. And I like, I need to start putting more videos up. I even got like an influencer box from Spirit that I haven't like done a you unveil. got a Spirit influencer box. I'm a goth influencer now. <laughs> I think that's amazing. I got Highly. a box full of Magic the Gathering Cheetos, and I got to tell you, this is what I did. Can I tell you the story? But we're going to talk about the book, yes. and we're going to do Fortnite afterwards, y'all, who, who are in the audience. <laughs> but those at home, hopefully you're watching my streams as well. So I was shooting something, a little video for somebody at a friendly local game store. And I mentioned okay. to the guy, the manager, that oh, I got this ridiculous box full of Magic Gathering Cheetos and they're really cool, but I don't want to open them and I don't have any room for them. And he was like, oh my gosh. Our guy who manages all of our Magic events was just talking mm -hmm. about these Cheeto boxes and the fact he went to the store and they're all sold out and he was so sad that he couldn't get them. And I was like, you know what? And I was like, when's the next time he's going to be here? And he was like, oh, tonight, because we uh, we're doing a Magic event. And I was like, well, they have their weekly magic. The, the magic event is this weekend, but they had their weekly magic thing. I was like, uh -huh. I'm going to be here and I'm going to give it to him. So I walked up. I was like, hey, Quan, here. And he took the box. And it was like a brown box they had sent me, the PR. And he opened it. And I've never seen anyone happier in my entire life from opening a box. This, I mean, he was the cutest. The, the look on his face was so joyful. And I was like, this was worth driving across town in in rush hour traffic and i was like i wasn't gonna do it i was like oh, i don't know and eh, i just do it and it made this guy's day it was like being santa claus Aww. but with magic the gathering uh cheese it's so i love that i love that you know that um cheese it's has a uh, beauty palette if you ever want it <laughs> oh really not joking yeah i got the chipotle one because i was like I, uh, why not? And it was like, <laughs> you know me, I will, I will wear lipstick, but I can't wear any makeup outside because I'll just melt off. Yeah, I'll be yeah, like, yeah. I'll be like the melting Nazi in Indiana Jones. Like, I just can't keep makeup on me in L.A. summer. Uh, and then I try to put on eye makeup, but my new glasses cover it all. So I just, it's just lipstick. But I love, I love getting weird influencer box. I get them That's from National great. Geographic, National Geographic yeah. and uh, Discovery Channel. 
and like all the sciencey ones I get. I mean, it's which wonderful. Are fun. There's nothing better. Okay, well, uh, click on the little eyeball on your alert source in OBS if you want the whoosh to stop. Yeah, I don't know oh. what's going on with these source. Uh, I will say I apologize. I don't There's know. There's a whoosh. There's a whoosh. Click on the little eyeball on your alerts source in OBS, but the source isn't even on this uh, scene, Adam. Well, do I need to click on something? You do not. No. I do not know okay. what's going on. The whoosh, <laughs> it's so whooshy. Where are these alerts? Where are they? Okay, I'm turning this off. Okay. Oh, great, it stopped. Yeah, it sounded like someone was, was, was flushing a soft sweeping. toilet. They were either sweeping or oh. flushing a soft I'm sorry, y'all, at home. I'm going to get back on the podcast and be organized. I apologize. It's unprofessional still. Anyway. Um, anyway, the book. The book. <laughs> the book. Okay, so I just, yeah, I want to give a shout out to that. I want to give a shout out to Gary Witta, my friend, who got the best box for Starfield ever, and I'm very jealous. So I just want to put that out there. But you know, we all influence in our own special ways. Can I, can I show another thing I got at Michael's? Still in beta. So what is that? So it's a ghost. It's a prop that looks like a bunch of books. Yeah, it looks like books stacked up. Oh my gosh. So basically yeah. Bonnie is holding up four books and it looks like books yeah. together, but they're actually, it's just a machine. So and one of them, yeah. one of the books pops out and makes that yeah. sound. It makes like a creaking sound. It's the only thing at Michael's that isn't like got a weird voice or dumb music. So, um, and also I don't, I, I get like 20%, 40% off. I use all the coupons for everything. Yeah. I hate, I don't like animatronics. I just don't want anything in my house to make noise because I have like a little bit of issues with being an adhd -er. I don't want to have a bunch of noise everywhere. Yeah. But I do like a quality creaky door sound. I, and that one you can turn off. That is the, if you want. my problem is that my daughter, uh, her life revolves around Halloween. I'm actually going to Europe <gasps> to do MCM London. But, and I was going to stay there because I have to be in Rhode Island the weekend, weekend afterwards, right? So I was like, great, mm -hmm. I'll stay on the East Coast. I'll spend, you know, five days in London. I'll do it. I'll go home. I won't be jet lagged. Halloween is the day after. It's Tuesday the uh -oh. 31st. And so I was like, well, I could not be with my child during Halloween or I could fly home, do Halloween and immediately turn around and leave and go to Rhode Island. And that's what I'm going to do because it is just too important to her. We have a lot of comments in the chat during this live book club where they're saying, uh, Lodgy, says I purchased those books as well. So this is a very popular Michael's item that probably will be flying off the yes. shelves, literally. Uh, there was there was only one left. The thing with Michael's too, is they have five different uh, like kinds of Holly, Halloween stuff. Like they have kind of like a Grateful Dead romantic skull thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have an Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe thing. I'll post a picture on Edgar, uh, the Edgar Allan Poe vase I got. He has like a scar or something on there. So I put a Fez hat on him. So it'll be fine. Yeah. But like, uh, there's just a bunch of different things. And you know, Target only has two styles, but Michael's goes to town. Michael's has a pastel goth line for Halloween. Okay. So you can buy, like, I'll go a pink. Uh, you can buy a pink skull. Anyway, I have not met your daughter in person yet, but now that I know she loves oh, yeah. Halloween. We, we're going to have to do a I, Halloween oh. event together, Bonnie. You, she'll be uh, like in love with you. Also, more I mean, uh, people love your hair. Your hair looks fantastic. Did you dye oh, it? You. What happened here? It's really yeah. cute. Uh, Yeah, it got re-blued, re-purpled. You can't really see it. I can it. tell it. I can tell. It's beautiful. Is it okay. highlights? Did you put the highlights in or is it like an overall purple? It's kind of overall, but then there's some dark brown in there. That's my natural hair color. So I didn't want it to be too in your face because I was going to a family reunion in oh, Kansas. Oh, yeah, we where... talked about that. Yeah, well, that was Yeah, fun. so I, I don't want to overpower my relatives with my usual weirdness. So, but I like it. It's fun. And it's, you know, it's it's fine. It's It doesn't matter anymore because since COVID, it's not like you have to no. dress or look like an adult And anymore. being on you strike. I mean, I'm going to a strike uh, event. There's a big supernatural strike event tomorrow. And I think there's a bunch of cast members are gonna be there, even though it's not, we're not saying it's supernatural because we're not trying not to do show oriented, yeah. but it's everybody from supernatural. Um, well, the strikes, the strikes are like my Comic-Con. So like, if I want to see my friends, I, know. I go strike with them. You go them. striking. <laughs> it really is a social not... event. People are like, hey, you want to strike with me? And I'm like, yeah. But my daughter is in school next week, so I can actually strike a little bit more. Okay. She gets... Yeah, because I'm not a TV writer. Uh, I'm not really an actress, so I'm not in any guild Hey, any whatsoever. support. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be tons of fans there, and that's okay. Fans, yeah. you can really... It's, it's really fun. I mean, the support really is appreciated because there are a lot of gates and there are a lot of studios who are trying to screw us over, so... Thank you for uh, supporting that. Um, so anyway, we do have a book club and we pick a book every month. 
and we d ah. ramble around it, but this one is actually a really cool book. I had read uh, a review of it online. I was like, why don't I know about this book? Um, mm. And it is called, and I actually bought this in hardback because I've been trying to read <gasps> physical books because I don't want my daughter to think I'm on the phone all the time. I'm actually reading books most of the time, but they're lit RPGs, so I just kind of go through them on my phone. But I want to start reading real books. At least every other book is a real book. And so I bought mm -hmm. it. And so the book is called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. And this was a top book of last year. It was a New York Times bestseller. And the wonderful thing about it is, and it's blurbed by John Green, Aaron Morgenstern, Nathan Hill, Rebecca Serrell, Tayari Jones. But it was also the first book in the Jimmy Fallon book club. Oh, I did not know that. Well, yep. uh, it's about game developers. So I said, we have to, re we have to read this book. And I was blown away by it. Uh, Bonnie, um, I'm going to read the yeah. I'm going to read the blurb, and then we could get into uh, what you think about it. Okay. Okay. Um, in a bitter cold day in the December of his junior year at Harvard, Sam Masur Masser exits a subway car and sees amid the hordes of people waiting on a platform Sadie Green. He calls her name. For a moment, she pretends she hasn't heard him, but then she turns, and a game begins—a legendary collaboration that will launch them to stardom. These friends, intimates since childhood, borrow money, beg favors, and before even graduating college, they have created their first blockbuster game, Ichigo. Ichigo? I'm sorry. I always read things. I don't know how to pronounce them. Overnight, the world <laughs> is theirs. Not even 25 years old. Sam and Sadie are brilliant, successful, and rich, but these qualities won't protect them from their own creative ambitions or the betrayals of their heart. Spanning 30 years from Cambridge, Massachusetts, to Venice Beach, California, and lands in between and far beyond, uh, Gabrielle Zevin's Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is a dazzling and intricately imagined novel that examines the multifarious nature of identity, disability, failure, and redemptive possibilities in play, and above all, our need to connect, to be loved, and to love. Yes, it's a love story, but not one you have read before. So, good job. I have not read a legitimate novel in probably <laughs> years. So, <laughs> wait a minute. What do you mean legitimate? No, okay. All I have, this stuff we read is legitimate. I have not read a book that is deep thinky, literary, more mainstream in a long time. I read fantasy novels and sci-fi, wonderful books, mainstream in my my I, 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 my mind. But like, this is definitely a different, and it was a different vibe, and it really kind of took a while for yeah. me to let it settle in. Oh, this is a book about feelings and character and we're gonna dive deep and we're going dark places. And it was incredible, y'all. Yeah. yeah, it was, um, I mean, we both have very different gaming backgrounds. Like I'm not a huge gamer, you are. I write for games now. So it's like, that is my rent. I, I'm writing RPGs and mobile games, all YA and young adult stuff, but also, very fan driven because I'm working for two IPs I can't announce yet, but they're big. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing that since I left Hunt to Killer Games. And so that's sort of my like professional side. And then personal side, I'm an old school gamer. So like I do Frogger. <laughs> I do like Miss Pac-Man. Like the only thing I've done that's actually recent is some Skyrim and definitely Sims. Yeah. But I do I remember that. you I were treat... addicted to Sims. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, I, tre I treat Sims like a Stanford uh, prison experiment kind of thing. Like I just want to see, you know, how I, it's like that YouTuber Let's Game It Out where he just breaks the game as he's playing it. Yeah. That's kind of what I do. Cause I just don't like shoot em ups. I like anything that like involves mental, torture there's plenty so of games like that yeah yeah and and yeah. what's really cool about this is that i believe why are we getting the whooshes again i don't know y'all oh boy i don't is know is it a haunting I, being haunted? I feel like i'm being haunted i'm looking the discord audio it wouldn't be there game audio i muted game audio I, is it me no Am I the it's problem? not you oh, okay. it's something else <laughs> i don't know i hear they the wishes okay so you guys don't hear the wishes all right so it's something that's not being recorded at least so we're just we're just slowly going crazy that's inevitable okay nobody else we, is hearing wishes no. i'm definitely hearing it or i'm going insane anyway um anyway anyway so <laughs> they were and so these two are making games around 94 which is probably i think they're like probably five six seven years older than me but a lot that's, of the, yeah, it, yeah, that's when I did it. Yeah. So this is really contemporary to you. Like, I feel like these characters are your age, um, Bonnie. Yeah. I would, oops, don't fall. I, I only, I almost like ripped the mic out of my, this is the thing. I am like old school intro internet, but like, I'm still catching up to yeah. whatever everyone uses now. Like social media. I'm okay. I've like belonged to everything now. So like blue sky, T2, post, 
threads, whatever. I'm on it. You got to be on it. You have to. I'm on everything. Well, I have to because I do social media strategy for big companies. So I got to know what everything's on right now. But what I remember from 94, so I would have been... Uh, I should have been graduating from college, but I changed from one major or one degree to two. So like I got a a BS in journalism, that's funny. And then a BA in English literature. But at that time, the internet was still very new. Like Netscape was our browser and had a pulsing N. And the only games you could like really play online were kind of word-based unless they were CD-ROM games, which were great, or Doom. Like I think Doom and Quake we're like, the yeah, ones they were really big. Played. I mean, well, it started with Wolfenstein. That. Wolfenstein. 94 was a yeah. good year. Yeah. Says Bill Hicks. Yeah. So I remember that it was a good combo of I could play Mist or the Resident Evil or not Resident Evil, the Residents, the band, the Residents, uh, something on the Midway. There was like a Carney game that you could play. It was like Mist. Yeah. Or I would be, you know, oh, after hours at the tech company I was working for playing Doom or Quake in the dark with a bunch of dudes. So it's like, that's what I remember as far as 1994. But also, I was a go-go dancer going to rave. So my memories are a little fuzzy. Yeah. So you don't know what was going on. But it was it is really interesting uh, to kind of read about, like, so these two, Sam and Sadie, they make this game together. And Sam doesn't actually have a lot of background in um, making games. And Sadie is going to MIT and doing game design. And it's a really... There's some really dark things in this uh, book, uh, but they are, they've been friends since they were like 10 years old and they were, they met in the hospital and there's, I don't want to really spoil it because I, I know a lot of you probably haven't read it, but I really want to urge you if you like video games and you want to read about two, it really is about a creative partnership over like 30 years that is beautiful and it's a platonic relate, you know, like, well, I can't say platonic. It, it's very mick. It's complicated. I read uh, recently in, in one article that I read, uh, Sam is actually autistic. It's never really um, spelled out, but he as a character yeah. is supposed to be. Did you pick that up, Bonnie? It's weird because I don't really say that anymore. I say neurodivergent, which sounds like a movie. Oh, actually, yeah. it probably was a movie title. It's neurodivergent, um, yeah. Because I, because I am, I am, I have ADHD. I'm dyslexic. Uh, sounds really throw me over the edge. So like, I can't have a lot of sounds everywhere mm-hmm. and i don't know i'm in therapy for it in fact i'm going to therapy right after this Yay. so i uh but with autism with autism it's such a spectrum now so to say someone's autistic is kind of like saying someone is bipolar or saying someone is something else when it's like a whole range yeah i i kind of got that he was ace like i kind of felt like maybe he was asexual which i love yes i love re- i love representation of asexual i'm bisexual or i guess pansexual and uh, bi erasure is a huge thing in the gay and straight community. They just don't think bi exists. So we're not, even though we're like on the, we're in the acronym. That's what that B stands for is yeah, bi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I have a special like feeling of sticking up for the asexuals because they don't have any, like, they're, it, ugh, it's just so sad. They don't get represented as much as they should. For sure, Sam. Yeah, for sure, Sam. I, I From interviews and other analysis that I read about the book, like it's unspoken that he is on the spectrum and he is tends to be asexual. He also has another disability that he's dealing with his whole life in that. Oh, yeah. I don't want to give, right. and of course, I don't want to give it away because the book is really beautifully put together in that it's not linear time. You go back and forth in time a lot, kind of seeing glimpses of, how the relationship started, um, going forward, you know, it, and it's not annoying. Yeah. It's not like time traveler's wife, you know, something like that. It, oh God. it goes very, it's, it goes so <laughs> very naturally. I know I hate that book so much. Um, <laughs> I, I usually don't say I hate anything, but for some reason that well, really bothered you're me. You're allowed. You're, oh, it bothered me a lot. Like you're yeah. allowed, you're allowed. Um, so, uh, basically I, I love the way that it just seamlessly flowed and it was really, instinctively following the emotional pattern of how this relationship is going. So it was beautiful, you know, it would it would end on a cl- kind of a cliffhanger in a moment and then it would go back 10 years and kind of see why some of this um, between them. And it's very two complicated characters. Like Sam is very complicated. Sadie is super complicated. It's a character analysis throughout. You're di- diving really deep into these characters' psyches, all of their um, issues, all of their trauma, all of their backgrounds, their mothers, you know, it's like, it's the kind of depth of character that because I've been reading nothing but lit RPG care, uh, books for the last six months, I'm like, oh, 
you could really dive into a character and not just, you know, kick things with your foot, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's funny. You're reading them and I'm writing them. Yeah. So it's like, this is, this is a fun, this is a fun read. I, you know what? I was, I remember I was first looking at some of the reviews before I read it. And also it's big, it's a big book. And I was like, please don't be like a Michael Ch Chibon book. Like, don't be a big intellectual yeah. Yeah. Like Mc, like a McSweeney's book because my brain cells can't handle no. much right now because it's it's uh, it's all over the place. So I like the book. I thought there were some problems. I think a little bit with Sadie. Mm -hmm. I she felt like a Mary Sue kind of character at one point. Also, I felt like she didn't have as hmm, I liked her growth at the end, but I wanted more of her that that Sadie instead of the beginner. Sadie, uh, whenever you have a book of two characters that are growing throughout the book, they should change because that's what you're supposed to do as an adult yeah. or digress or digress like I did. But I I don't know, like I, I liked their, I love that they met in a hospital because I spent so much time in a hospital because I was a sickly kid. And having other kids that you can talk to when you're like six or seven and you're in a child you know, you're it, you're sick and you're there. And also like, you don't know if, how sick everybody else is. It's a good bonding experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they bond over, bo they bond over Super Mario Brothers that Sam- Which is great. Yeah, and he actually, is, she's the one who be, gets him to talk after a very traumatic event that he has in his life and he hasn't talked for yeah. like months. And so, I'm sorry, that's my dog. There's just not gonna be good sound for this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> dog noise it's fine it's fine it's just adding to the experience that is our podcast so i agree with fine. you uh i felt everyone was a little forgiving of sadie because sometimes her um acerbic nature yeah. she's a hard to like character and she makes she some is. decisions that are very uh seemingly selfish very self-protective and I, I i i was very interested because we get a lot of backstory on sam but Sadie, mm -hmm. we don't really learn much about her parents. Mm -hmm. We learn about her grandma a little bit, but we don't deep dive into why she is the way she is as much as Sam. And it's so yeah. interesting because the people around her do forgive her a little bit too much. Um, yeah. In my opinion, I'm like, I don't know why they're cutting her all this slack. Like Sam has all these traumas he could overcome. He has clearly a lot of issues work, uh, working with people. And then Sadie is just like this, you know, She's a, a goddess of programming, but she's a difficult personality. And sometimes people yeah. are not calling her on her BS. Again, she also has this very destructive relationship with Dove, her mentor, Ugh. which was- By the way, I just wanted, oh, I wanted Dove to fall in a pit of acid. Like, I was just like, can I just write some fan fiction where I kill Dove? Cause like, I, ugh, I hated that guy. Hated him. I hate, I, and I will say a little spoiler alert. There is a scene later in the book where I don't think she should have been that nice to him, and why? I'm like, uh, what? Yeah, it's uh, he was well, he was pretty I mean, gross. It does it does, does kind of represent women who are very you know I, I don't want to say external extroverted or very driven mm -hmm. sometimes fall for jerks, and maybe that's the representation we're seeing is smart, talented, creative woman falling for a jerk is a thing and it's also a thing that happens when you are working in a predominantly straight white dude realm and yeah. uh you end up dating i've dated i've dated a lot of co-workers it's i don't recommend because when the breakup's bad it's meetings are extra bad yeah 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 no i get it <laughs> I mean, especially if yeah. you're in a creative format and you're working with one of your heroes like i mean the power imbalance oh. i mean just look at hollywood a lot of a lot of abuse right. happens because people achieve power and can take advantage of people who are willing to be taken advantage of, but almost unconsciously because the person is someone they admire so much. And uh, it's really hard not That's... to abuse that, you know? Like we see even like YouTube, yeah. YouTube people like abusing fans and like taking advantage oh, of yeah. their work and all of it. It just feels, my dog also... will not stop barking. I'm so sorry. Oh, is he right there? Just pet him. Just to on camera. She's outside. That... She wants on camera? Why? Oh. There's nothing out there. It's a squirrel. The dog, the dog's a dog. It's got to live its animal life. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking when I read this book, how even today there's a lot of top name comp gaming companies that are still dealing with cancel culture and the fallback of, or the fallout of, you know, men mistreating female coders, female, you know, uh, game I mean, writers. It's when it's happening still now. There's issues at Ubisoft. Is. There's it issues is. at Blizzard, and I don't think any of them have really addressed it in a way that I felt like, oh, I'm, I feel great about, 
you know, and I love these companies. I love a lot of people who work there and I love their games and it's really, really difficult to not see them implement something that's going to help, uh, you know, make it uh, better. And this is definitely set 20 mm. years before. I mean, it's, yeah. it's set in a time that's where true. I feel like some of the, some of the themes are predate the time. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I will say that existed when I was in tech. So as soon as I left college, I worked at Apple, and then I worked at uh, At Home Network, and then I worked at Excite. I'm just going to rattle off things that no one in this group even knows no, I'm talking no. about because all we these guys are dead. Yeah, please. But People like, with all sorts of backgrounds here. Yeah, I like wrote for Wired when they first started. So it's like, the thing is, is when you're a female and you're, or you identify as a woman and you want to be in a company that makes your favorite games, comics, books, whatever, and is predominantly male, you you have this weird sensation of, oh, I'm I'm the first or I'm going to pave the way. Yeah. And then you realize there's no paving. What basically happens is you're there, uh, at least in that time, like now I hope it's a lot better, but... Uh, what I'm doing now, I don't have a team. I'm the only writer on the games that I'm writing. And yeah. it's, it's much different when you have like a writer's room scenario. And what I noticed, and this, I mean, working 10 years at Lucasfilm, if anything there that taught me how to like get stuff done and get stuff approved is you have a great idea. They will completely ignore it. But if you make your boss think it's his idea, it will get done. Yeah, And so you kind of have to like, manipulate the situation but having people take credit for your work i think sadly still happens to a lot of us not just women you know it happens across the board but i will say we've almost gotten so used to it that that's sad that yeah. it's been normalized to the point so when i read this book there's a lot of triggers in this book by the way so oh if my you guys gosh trigger there's a lot oh. of triggers uh and there's a particularly i mean i don't want to spoil it because again i i'm worried that some of you guys i know it's book club and we should just discuss it but well i mean you can find I, I found the triggers on goodreads i think they list the triggers uh because i'm a horror film fan that goes to does the dog die.com before i watch something so i don't have to watch a poor dog die because I, I can't handle that in my horror you can kill a bunch of kids but don't you dare kill a dog oh no don't kill so, a dog forget it so triggers triggers for me are more you know violent triggers so the triggers of dude taking credit for a girl's work that's just my day to day so i mean so that wasn't that. particularly <laughs> horrifying i mean it was gross to see dove and her take advantage of the relationship being her professor and then dating her but in this very dominating controlling uh situation yeah. and her getting back into this relationship for the sake of her game but they kind of kind of and I would have loved to, to know why, why she trapped herself in this relationship, why she submitted to some sexual stuff that wasn't stuff she wanted to do, but because of the power imbalance she did, you know, kind oh, yeah. of got, and then she resented her friend Sam because she got back involved with him. So like there's, again, it's very deep character wise. There's some really th interesting things. I mean, the, the title itself is from Macbeth. So there's a lot of thinky yeah. stuff. Yeah, the Macbeth, spoiler alert, that's not a happy play. No. <laughs> so, I mean, if if you really want to look up where in context that quote is, it's it's pretty much towards the end. I think it's the fifth act. Yeah. Fifth acts never, fifth acts never work out uh, yeah. in Shakespeare. One one thing I did want to bring up is uh, before we end this, because it was super quick. Talk, I know, but that's okay, uh, guys. We'll do, okay. a, I got the tech working. I think this actually is a better <laughs> situation. We have... Yeah. My mods, uh, my mod Rocket Soup is helping us record this on Discord so the quality will be the highest we can. But then we have a better uh, streaming experience um, when we're doing yes. things live. So yeah, I so appreciate no your more, patience. Uh, yeah, so hopefully the comments I read for this video will be great. But um, <laughs> yeah, I the, there's two games that are mentioned. Uh, there's Emily Blaster, which is awesome, which is like you use Emily Dickinson quotes as like lasers to like. That was one of the games the Sadie made. Yeah, she made three games. She made several yeah. games, and but there's so many game the references one, in this. Yeah, right. But then the big one was uh, I is it I Ch I Ch Ch Chigo I Chigo or yeah, that, that one I that one yeah yeah. And so, I mean, that's their big hit. But then it also leads to them making a studio and about how their working relationship got very toxic because of the credit and um, and their personalities. And then they went, go on to make an MMO. So it really is interesting if you're a gamer. This this woman, Gabrielle, is obviously a gamer. She's, she loves video games. And she has a mm. lot of references there from King Quest to one of the games that um, is in the book uh, is very Stardew Valley-esque. They have like an yeah. MMO. So... 
it really is very fun um, the way that she uses games. I could literally see this book being written about any business. Like you could put them in the shoe oh, yeah. business. You could put them in the movie business. The relationship I mean, is so real. But at the same time, it's wonderful to have a well-researched, authentic representation of two extremely creative people in the gaming world and how their relationship yeah. forms their art, which video games are, their art. Yeah, and it reminded me a lot of the series Halt, Catch, Fire, um, which I always recommend to people who want to know what it was like uh, building the internet out and being a woman uh, in as part of this, because I definitely was. Like, I was part of the well. I was part of, you know, AOL's, not AOL, eWorld, which was Apple's AOL. Um, but that's, I was getting some, like, glimpses of that TV series kind of in this book. Ready Player One, yeah, obviously, yeah. there was some, like, references. But Sims. I, I love Sims. Sims. They also had I mean, a really interesting game that they made that had two different sides to it, which reminded me of... There was a game, uh, Nord it was made by a person from, I think, Norway or Sweden about having like a person's real life and then when they go to sleep or they kind of cross over to a dream life or a fantasy life. Anyway, it's really, it was, it was wonderfully <laughs> researched and realized as far as like indie artistic games go. Yeah. I mean, it's also like, I just love it for the characters. So even if you don't understand or like video games, I think this book is great just for the characters yes. and just for the relationships and, I, and, and I, how yeah. deep it gets. And I will yeah. say that it does, I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, 400 pages. It's extremely <laughs> fast read. It is, it is. It I, is. I was so yeah. surprised. I was like, I, I was reading and reading and I was like, oh, I'm already almost done. And I, there were a couple of quotes. I don't know if I could do that, but. Um, she realized she wasn't old at all. You couldn't be old and still be wrong about so many things as she'd been wrong about. And it was kind of immaturity to call yourself old before you were. I love that quote. I loved it. There's so I many. Mean, I'm wrong about everything and I'm super old. So. Exactly. <laughs> so I would yeah. really, 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 um, I would really recommend this if you're a gamer, if you want to read a book that's worth discussing and worth kind of lingering with you, because I'll always have that relationship in my mind. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Uh, okay, Bonnie. Oh, and oh yeah. And it's good, and it's good we read it because it just got optioned. So, I mean, with the writer strike going, who knows when that'll happen, but it got optioned. So. I don't know what kind of movie it would make. I want to be honest with I you. I don't either. If you took, I don't either. It really it needs to be a TV series. TV series would be better. No, but also, I don't feel like it, it's partly the writing and deep diving into somebody's internal life and their past life is really what it's about. And I feel like if you just yeah. take the surface of the plot, it's going to be... Meh, Weird. you know, not as good. Anyway, yeah. so Bonnie has to run, but Bonnie is picking next month's book, which is? It's called uh, Becoming Crone. It's the first book in the Crone Wars series. It's an urban fantasy book. Um, it's by Lydia M. Hawk, who I love. She's great. She's on social media, and I connected with her, like, instantly when this book came up. Love because it. it's it's the premise is it's her 60th birthday, and she suddenly gets powers. Love so it. it's like, you know, which I love because I'm so, I mean, I write YA, I love YA, but man, it's so nice to read about someone that's not at high school or college for a change and who actually has a sense of humor. Like if you were just going through, you finish menopause and oh, ta-da, you have powers. Like, what would you do with that? Like, it's just an interesting book series. There's four books so far. It's a fast read. It's really funny. Um, I don't want to spoil it for you, but you, you, I think the majority of our viewers would enjoy it. It's just a really fun book. So. No, it's, it looks like a great, I haven't read Urban Fantasy in quite a while, so I'm really looking forward to it. And by the way, for October, we're already pre-picking Gary Witta's Gundog, okay? So we're going to read Yay. our friend's book in October. So I don't know if you have to get on a library list or want to uh, order it. It's available everywhere now um so go ahead and nab it because we're going to read that in october and it's all about mechs and stuff and it's it's a sci-fi so, mech book so yeah. we already have two books planned out see we're getting more together all we're right fine and also there's no lag i feel like we're eventually getting to the point where we look professional which is great i will <laughs> upload this to the felicitations podcast and do a felicitations podcast this month okay so you're getting it Yay. all all is right is this also gonna be on you is this gonna be on youtube too yes right? we upload to youtube we have it okay. on the audio feed and we also have it here live with you guys the last tuesday of the month although now it's wednesday and that might change yeah. we'll figure it out check my discord we'll for all the information as well as please please pre-order Third Eye, which is my audio project. They're calling it an audio book. It's like eight or nine hours worth of content, but it's really a fully acted TV show. It's about a chosen one who fails and a girl who comes into her life and blows it up. It's a comedy starring me. 
uh, Neil Gaiman, Will Wheaton, Alan Tudyk, uh, Sean Astin, London Hughes, Lily Pichu. It has a huge cast. I've worked on it for five years and it's my baby and it's coming out October 5th. So if you go to audible.com slash third eye, you can pre-order it. I'm sure you have a credit, just nab it. And you're gonna get all that in your ear holes. Uh, it's a lot of writing and I'm so proud of it. So hopefully you guys can check it out, okay? Yay. I will be back in five minutes with some Fortnite and thank you so much. All right. Bye guys.